Hi everyone and welcome to this video about similar shapes. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video and remember you can always comment down below any questions that you had about the video and if you would like me to do a video on another topic please leave that in the comments section down below as well. In another video I've already covered similar triangles. In this video we're going to cover similar shapes. So we're going to treat them slightly differently because not only could we have 2D similar shapes that are not triangles, as we can see on this right hand side, we can also have 3D objects that are similar shapes as well. And so the approach in tackling questions where the objects are less standard and they could be 3D as well is going to be a bit different from how we approach the triangles. We're going to start off with a fact that we should already know if we've studied similar triangles. The ratios between the corresponding sides in the two shapes are always going to be equal. We can see that AB to DE is the same ratio as AC to DF, etc, etc. Let's look at this example together first. So these are not triangles, these are of course rectangles, but we can use the same fact that corresponding sides have the same ratio. Clearly this rectangle is in the exact same alignment, however, we can't test if the two shapes are similar or not like we could with two triangles. Remember with triangles, if all of the angles were the same, that was an easy test to see if the two triangles were similar. However, with rectangles and other more complicated shapes, we can't do that same test. So the question will always tell you whether the shapes are mathematically similar. So always look out for this fact in a question. Let's start then by constructing a ratio between corresponding sides that we have the numbers for. So the side on the left that is 4 long and the side that is 12, we know that those are corresponding to each other, so let's construct the ratio 4 over 12. We know that corresponding sides will share this same ratio, so I'm looking for these two sides now because I'm looking for this missing side and the side that corresponds to it is 3. So remember we started with the smaller shape and then we had the larger shape's value on the bottom of our fraction. So we must keep that pattern, and we're going to do 3 over my unknown, so I'm going to leave that as x. Multiplying both sides by x, and then timesing both sides by 12, and then dividing both sides by 4. That's going to work out that x is in fact 9. Of course we could have simplified this fraction first to make it a little bit simpler for us, but we got to the answer in the end. So we've used the fact that the side lengths are related by a ratio. We call the ratio that links together side lengths the scale factor. We can think of this as a one-dimensional relationship. We're just thinking about lines in the smaller shape and the larger shape. So for this case, the scale factor of the small shape to the large shape would be 1 to 3. We could write it as 4 to 12, but of course we know we can simplify that ratio down to 1 to 3. And it doesn't matter which pair of corresponding sides I choose, I'm always going to get the same scale factor. So now that I've worked out that this bottom length is 9, if I was to construct the scale factor using the bottom side of the shape, I'd find that the ratio 3 to 9 is in fact exactly the same as what I worked out previously, 1 to 3. Let's look at now the area of these two shapes. We're going to start by calculating the area of the left-hand shape. This is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12, and now the area of the larger shape, which is 12 times 9, which is 108. So it might not look like there's any relationship between the areas, but let's remind ourselves that our scale factor between the two shapes is 1 to 3. Remember the smaller shape on the left and the larger shape on the right. Now the area factor is simply a ratio of the areas, so we could write 12 to 108. Let's simplify this ratio now. We can divide by 12 on both sides. So that ratio is equal to 1 to 9. And this gives us a hint as to how the area factor is linked to the scale factor. In order to go from the scale factor, I'm going to simplify as SF. What I need to do is square this in order to find my area factor. We can see that that's the case with our numerical solution from before. If we squared both sides of this ratio here, we would in fact end up with our area factor 1 to 9. 
I've taken the exact same rectangle and now I've just elongated it to make it into a 3D cuboid. Remembering that our scale factor is 1 to 3 between the one-dimensional lines, so the corresponding lines of the smaller shape to the larger shape, while well, they're related with the ratio 1 to 3, we worked out previously that my area factor is going to be 1 to 9. So I found that the corresponding areas of the smaller object to the bigger object are related with the ratio 1 to 9. So that means that not just this front face of the two shapes is related in its area with the area factor 1 to 9, but also this top face would be related to the top face of the larger object with the ratio of 1 to 9 as well. So I can do a quick calculation for the depth of this second cuboid. That's going to be 6 deep. Now I can do the area calculation and then times by the depth in order to work out the volume of each of the shapes. So the shape on the left has the volume 4 times 3 times 2, which is going to be 24. And on the right hand side, I can do the same calculation, which is 648. So now let's link together the volume of the smaller object with the volume of the larger object. This is going to be related with something I call a volume factor, and the ratio will be 24 to 648. Now if we simplify this, we can divide both sides by the same thing a few times here. Or if you'd like to, you can put it into your calculator as a fraction. 24 over 6, 4, 8, and we'll find that that simplifies down to 1 to 27. If we compare our volume factor to our original scale factor, you might have been able to see that we've just cubed both sides of our scale factor in order to find our volume factor 1 to 27. 1 cubed is 1, and 3 cubed is 27. So that shows you that the volume factor and the scale factor are linked. So we found that what links together our similar shapes are these three sets of factors, these three sets of ratios, the scale factor, the area factor, and the volume factor. So the last thing to remember is what relates the factors to each other. We know that to get from the scale factor to the area factor, we have to square. To get from the scale factor to the volume factor, we have to cube. What people are often confused about is how to go from the area factor to the volume factor. But in order to do this, we need to retrace these arrows. To go in the opposite direction, we would have to square root, and then we would have to cube. So if you have the area factor and you need the volume factor, you must square root your area factor to find the scale factor, and then cube both sides of your scale factor to find the volume factor. This is something that catches people out all the time. And if you wanted the area factor, but you had the volume factor, then you would have to do the opposite of cubing, which is cube rooting, and then squaring your answer to find the area factor. Let's take a look at this example question together. So we can see that we've got a smaller cone and a larger cone. What I want you to find then is the volume of my larger cone. So I know I'm going to need a volume factor to link together these two mathematically similar shapes. Before I can find the volume factor, I first need to find the scale factor. So I'm going to pick out two lengths that correspond to each other. And these are going to be the heights of my cones, 3 and 12. The ratio of the smaller cone to the larger cone then is going to be 3 to 12. And if we simplify that scale factor, we find that that is 1 to 4. Remember the link between the scale factor and the volume factor is we need to cube both sides of our scale factor. 1 cubed is going to be 1, and 4 cubed is going to be 64. So this here is my volume factor. I know that the volume of the smaller shape will correspond to 1. And the way I like to think about ratios is I multiply both sides by the same thing. So to get from 1 to 40, I times by 40, and on the other side, that's what I need to do as well. So 64 times 40, which is going to be 2,560. So the volume of my larger shape, that's the answer then, 2,560 meters cubed. 
Let's take a look at this past paper question together. We have two mathematically similar shapes, the question tells us so, and we're given that the volume of the smaller prism is 648 centimeters cubed, and the volume of the larger shape is 2187 centimeters cubed. We're then told the area of the cross section of the smaller prism, and we're asked to find out the area of the larger shape's cross section. So in order to find a relationship between areas, which is what we're going to need, we're going to need the area factor in order to work out the cross section of the larger prism, we know that we need to find the scale factor first. But to find the scale factor, well, in this case, we have no lengths given to us. That means we need to start from the volume factor. The volume factor of the smaller shape to the larger shape will be 648 to 2187. Let's simplify this ratio. We find that the volume factor is 8 to 27. Now we can do the cube root of both sides of my volume factor in order to find my scale factor. The cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So now that I've got my scale factor, I need to square both sides of that in order to find my area factor. So 2 squared is 4, and 3 squared is 9. So the area factor that links together the two shapes is 4 to 9. 36 in the smaller shape is going to correspond to my 4. So let's take this ratio here. We see that on the left-hand side, we need to multiply the 4 in order to get to 36. So that's a multiplication by 9. So that means I need to do the same thing on the other side of my ratio. And the answer will be 81. So my final answer is 81 centimeters squared. Thank you for watching this video. I'm glad you've made it all the way to the end. If you have any questions about the video, remember you can leave them down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.